spread from bats to humans through the illegal trafficking of pangolins. The animals are highly prized in Asia and although protected by international law, they're considered a delicacy and are used in traditional medicine. Well, joining me now to discuss this is Dr Status Giotis from Imperial College's School of Medicine. Very good evening to you. First of all, we heard about uh, possibly it being bats and then snakes and now pangolins. What are we to make of this? Well, the actual virological evidence that we have so far suggests that the new coronavirus most likely derives from bats. However, the infections uh, happened in China in winter when we know that bats hibernate. So the assumption was that the virus jumps from bats to humans, not directly, but through an intermediary host. And that's what the Chinese colleagues are saying, that this intermediary host are the pangolins. However, uh, this uh, information comes from a very brief announcement from a Chinese university. Um, these scientists have not published um, their results and their work has not been scrutinized. Therefore, it's impossible to confirm or reject their findings. And of course, that's because so many scientists are rushing to try and publish whatever research they have done in light of this unknown virus. That's right. Uh, well, to establish a link um, between um, a species and a virus, more uh, studies are needed. Uh, for example, studies to show how prevalent this new coronavirus is in pangolin populations, uh, whether pangolins are uh, sold, for example, in the wet markets in China. Um, and we need more information about the technical um, uh, uh, methods that these scientists used uh, to sequence uh, the virus in pangolins. I mean, it sounds to me as though these, these so-called wet markets where wild animals, often different species from different parts of the country, come together in, in crowded and unhygienic and often, often stressful situations are an absolute disaster for public health, aren't they? Yes, they, they are ideal environments for the transmission of pathogens uh, between animals um, and other animals or humans. And if this um, turns out to be accurate, um, then it's just another precautionary tale of why we shouldn't uh, disturb um, wildlife habitats and shouldn't put wild animals into markets. Um, and am I right in thinking that the SARS virus uh, actually originated also in a so-called wet market? That's right. Um, the SARS virus jumped from... Uh, bats into uh, seabed cats that are also sold in wet markets in China and then from them uh, into humans. And so do you think that these should be outlawed, these markets? Yes, there should definitely uh, be some regulation, um, some legislation that bans um, uh, these, uh, um, these markets these, or this um, selling of these wildlife products. Um, and look, whilst, whilst the link with pangolins remains sort of a tenuous sort of scientific link, it does seem clear that bats are also not good for public health. Why are they so often the source of these sorts of viruses? Well, what happens is uh, bats are very important for the ecosystem. They're very important pollinators. Uh, they're really crucial for our ecosystem. Um, however, what happens is that all these viruses circulate in bat populations and over time they accumulate mutations um, which allow them to cross from bats into humans. Um, however, the reason for that is that with all this deforestation and destruction of natural habitats, um, the interface between bats and humans has expanded, making this transmission uh, easier. But by all means, the bats are, are harmless in all this. Um, and I'm just wondering how much we really understand, and by we I mean humans, you know, scientists like yourself, how much we really understand about the risk factors of, of, of zoonotic viruses, you know, the, these viruses that leap from animals into humans. How do we know what causes these risk factors? Well, almost 60% of human pathogens derive from um, animals. Um, uh, viruses such as flu virus, swine virus, rabies uh, come from animals, bubonic plague and other um, pathogens derived from animals. This is something that is well established in human history. Um, so, um, I mean, 
what, what, what is your question exactly? I'm sorry. I, I just wondered how much we really understand about the risk factors surrounding these viruses that can jump into humans, you know, how to minimise the risk, I suppose. Yes, I think the, the reason for all this is that we disturb the natural habitats uh, of the viruses, of, of, of these animals, and therefore um, the interface, the, our interaction with the animals is increased, and therefore making this transmission uh, easier. So the morale is that we shouldn't really um, disturb uh, the natural habitats of animals. OK, Dr Statis Giotis from Imperial College's School of Medicine. Really interesting to get your expertise this evening. Thank you. Thank you for having me.